Hello, I'm Daniel from UG LED. It's great pleasure to show our latest and incredible product to you. We have several versions of the introduction document, and this one is special for BC 270H, which is the 500 watt CLB. Here is the structure of this document. First, I'd like to have a short introduction of UG, then a general product introduction of VTC and VC series product. Next, start the COB introduction, including the material, packaging technology, and the advancement. Next is the value-added service from us. Then comes the typical test reports, both for color quality and the consistency with aging. Last is our future plan based on this product and my contact. UG Group was established in 2005. By that time, we started with chemistry. UG LED started in 2009. Our main business is LED phosphor, LED emitter, and another field of chemistry. There are over 200 employees in this group, and you can find more information about LED on our website. For LED business, our headquarters is located in Beijing, and we have two overseas offices in Tokyo and California. For LED phosphor, the R&D is in Beijing and the factory is in Xi'an a western city of China. For LED product, both R&D and factory are in Beijing as well. Next is our main product line, VTC and BC. BC is mounted with a 460 nanometer blue chip. With red and green phosphor, we will achieve RA95, R980+, for a complete spectrum. We produce frequently used color temperatures like 2700, 3200, 5600, and 6500K for cinematography lighting, and of course, wider range can be customized. About the SDCM, we keep a less than 3 step McAdam ellipse level by default for common color temperatures. VTC is mounted with a 405 nanometer violet chip. With red, green, and blue phosphor, we can accomplish truly full spectrum. And we keep same CCT and SDCM policy same as BC series. Here are the tungsten spectrums of BC and VTC. Obviously, there is an extra part of VTC than BC, and the same concept for daylight. This is a list of our present emitter products. For VTC, we mainly focus on low power products. For BC, we are completing the whole product line from 0.06 watt to 500 watt gradually, and we also develop other forms for of emitter like RGB and RGBW, which are getting more important for cinematography lighting. Here is the most common way we provide product to clients. For mid-power SMD, we provide single emitters and clients finish their PCB on their side and finish the whole fixture of soft light as well. For high-power SMD and high-power COB, we provide single emitters and clients finish their PCB, then the whole fixture of a nail light. Of course, if the light source is COB, there will not be the progress of PCB. Then, it's what we recommend. Due to we have the capability of designing, 
reducing PCB and managing chromaticity. We suggest to finish the PCB on our side. Then the clients can finish the whole fixture directly. This method saves one step of the production, and probably the cost will be saved as well. Now comes the BC 270H. First is the material of chip. 144 pieces chips are mounted on the base plate, and the maximum design power is 500 watt. And we use UG phosphor. The most important is we have the global patent protection for it. Then the base plate. We choose the material of ALN, which has a thermal conductivity of 170, but keep a tight size of 27 by 27 millimeters. About the packaging technology, we use flip chip modality, which is advanced in LED industry. A summary of the advancement for BC270H. It is the highest CRI S95 in industry for high power COB, especially for over 300 watt products. And uh, it's the highest power density COB in industry. The emission diameter is limited to 19 millimeters for helping design the light distribution with excellent heat treatment with thermal resistance below 0.04. It's easier to control the heat and guarantee the left span. We can keep the color temperature in a tight range of 150K, both for 3200K and 5600K. Sorry for that, I can only share the limited information about the product itself, because most has to be confidential. Here is the value-added service from UG for this product. We provide factory inspection report for each piece of BC270H. All parameters and the unique serial number are included. We can retrospect all sold products by any time. And we can provide heatsink. If you are going to design the heatsink by yourself, we are glad to assist with thermal dissipation suggestion. And the last thing is also what we always do. We accept special requirements for customizing other color temperatures or spectrums. From this page, I will show some test reports. First is the report that shows the evaluation of color quality. And uh, here is the SPD file. You can download it by clicking. I will bring in five types of test results, CRI and extended CRI, CQS, TLCI, TM3015, and the spectrum. We start from CRI. We have got a stable value of 95 of RA, which evaluates R1 to R8. And the result of extended CRI is 94. For important values for cinematography, we have got 88, 99, and 96 for R9, R13, and R15. Next is CQS. CQS is a calculation of RMS from Q1 to Q15. The result is 92, and all Q values are above 80. CQS tests more saturated colors than CRI, so personally, I believe it's more rational than CRI. Next is an important parameter for camera. We have got a 95 score for TLCI and the limited correction as in the list. 
Next is a new parameter, TM3015, which was just published by IES last year. TM3015 is not very popular yet, maybe because it's too new, but it seems like a most comprehensive tool to test color quality of the illuminant. You can see basically it has all key parameters for evaluating the color including chromaticity coordinates and the spectrum. Some new come up for fidelity and the hue angle. There are more data for TM30 and it is complex. We can talk about it later if you are interested. The last one is the spectrum. Always simulate the spectrum as daylight or tungsten. Comes the consistency and the aging test reports. We consider this as same important as color quality and sometimes even more important. You can download the original data from here as well. We evaluate three main parameters: spectrum shift chromaticity coordinate shift, and the luminous flux maintenance. First is spectrum shift. These are aggregative spectrums under four different powers, 220, 300, 370, 450 watt. It's difficult to tell the difference by this view, so we choose one part, magnify 20 times, then we get this. From the data, we can find that the tolerance is less than 2%, and for 220 and 450 watt, the spectrums are even coincident. And we have a check of chromaticity coordinate shift. The yellow line is the black body curve, and the white quadrant angles are UGSDCM. This test is based on 0, 64, and 180 hours under an interrupted working for 4 powers. It's also difficult to tell the difference, so we magnify 20 times as well. From this, we will find shifts are less than 0 0.0013, no matter what powers and how long it works. Besides, we also keep the coordinates below the black body curve to avoid greenish, which is sensitive for cinematography lighting. The last is luminous flux maintenance. You can download the, the original data here. We can check the luminous tendency curve one by one. We can find that all tolerances are less than 5%. Although we only got limited aging time for hundreds of hours, but according to the theory of LED, it already performed well presently, so we are quite optimistic for the future result with thousands of hours, even tens of thousands of hours our future plan. We definitely will continue the aging test starting from 1000 hours. And in 2017, we plan to develop 650 watt COB and the VTC series 500 watt COB. And in 2018, we probably start with a bicolor high power COB project. This is my contact. I'm always glad to be here to discuss any questions that you may have. Thank you for your time. We hope to bring more outstanding products in the near future. Welcome to follow us. Thank you.